Hi, I'm Molly Robbins and today I'm going to be showing you how to make realistic sugar paste hands. It's a tip that I learned a very long time ago and I find that you can use it for a lot of different cakes. So you might be doing a tiny model, you might be doing more of a life-size figure, you might even be doing um, an animal with similar hands. For example, when I teach my orangutan class, um, I teach this technique for doing orangutan hands because they're very, very similar to human hands. And it's a very simple technique. I've got some flesh-coloured sugar paste here just to show you. And I'm going to add a little bit of Tylo. You can use modelling paste, but I like to use sugar paste and add my own Tylo. And of course, if you don't know already, Tylo is a hardener that you can add to your sugar paste. And it makes it set harder, it makes it a little bit more firm and elasticated. So it makes it more of a modelling paste. But I think if you add your own, you can really be in control about kind of how stretchy it is or how mouldable it is. I don't like to use a really, really hard flour paste. I like it quite pliable, really. So we'll make some kind of medium-sized hands to start with, so you can see. And I always think when you're making a pair of hands, start off with two balls of sugar paste the same size. So they're about the same, I would say. And then you know you've got two matching hands. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the end, which is going to make the sort of wrist area the end of the hand. So you can see the shape there. Sort of looks like a head with a neck for now. And then this area is going to become the whole hand. And we're going to make the left hand first, because obviously they're mirror images of each other. So I'm going to flatten that out, and it's sort of like a, a paddle shape. So there's your overall shape. Don't make it too thin, because we want something to work with. We want the, the kind of depth to be there still. So just squash it out a bit, so it's like a paddle shape. Then, get a knife, and we're going to cut in here. So if you make the left hand, I mean, look at your own hands when you do this. Keep referencing your own hand versus your cake hand. And I'm going to make one cut in there. And then I'm going to make one there. And that is going to create the thumb. So you can see it kind of looks like a, a lobster claw at the moment. But that's OK. That's what we want. And then the remaining fingers, we're just going to make one two, three cuts, and you can kind of see it's coming to, to life already, this hand that we're making. It's a bit blocky, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our fingers here, which is the best tool you can use really, and we're going to roll each one. So I'm going to roll the thumb, and that is just going to get rid of all those blocky cuts and harsh lines, and then same again with the fingers. So we're kind of rolling them and stretching them out to make them longer. And then when you've got these points on the end, we're just using our fingers to push those in. This is why I like to use a fairly soft sugar paste. I mean, it's a lot more pliable and makes your life a lot easier. It blends nicely as well. So I'm rolling the finger and then I'm pushing it in like that. So there's your rough kind of shape. If you imagine that's the left hand, this bit's going to be the inside. So if you wanted to, you can grab a dressing tool and we can kind of mimic the shapes going on. So I always put that shape in here, which is the crease from the thumb. And then you can use your thin end, which is going to make the kind of creases, the deeper creases. So if you look where your finger is, you've got a deeper one in your thumb there. So there's one. And then these fingers, you've got one, two, three. So you go one, two, three. It's like the joints in your fingers. They're super simple. So that's going to be the inside. And that will also help if you want to bend your fingers at all. So say you want to make them different positions. It will help you put those joints in. And then the other side, you've got these knuckles on the top. so. 
you can make the little marks for the knuckles. So you've got one there, about a third of the way up. You've got little ones here, just at the base. Keep looking at your own fingers and just see if you can kind of get it the same. So they've got three there. And then for the nails, I like to do, just mark them in. So I'm just going two lines like that and then one underneath. You can mark it in like that. So one, two. And then the thumb is on the outside. So that's that's not on top, that's on the side. Again, keep looking at your own hands for this one. And if you're doing more of an aged hand, you could put some more lines on it, you know, make it look a bit more aged. You could then dust it if you wanted to, you could airbrush it just to get some different tones in there. And then you can pose it as well. So if you wanted to, you know, I do quite a lot of cakes that are um, superhero, you know, with the fist coming out the top, the green fist coming out the top. And if you want to do that, you can kind of just wrap them around like that. And do, you know, the great thing about making hands is you've got to, to look at right in front of you all the time. And you can just pose them however you want. And look at that, it's a little fist. And then it stands up by itself. So because I've done that one, I'm going to do the other one now just to show you in case you missed any of those bits. So again, we're rolling out the wrist. We're flattening. Remember, this is the other hand. So we're going the mirror image this way. Cutting out. And then we're going... One, two, three. We're rolling and pinching our fingers. Roll, pinch. So any kind of rough rounded edge, you want to really get rid of that and make it nice and rounded. Because anytime you're looking at anything natural, there's no straight lines. That's what my art teacher used to say, no straight lines in nature. So animals or humans or plants, very rare you'll find a perfectly straight line. So this is going to be our other hand. So exactly the same again. Go in that crease there. The little finger creases. Just to help us with our positioning. Other side now. Remember, you can stretch your fingers out if you want them longer. If you want them shorter, you know, little short fat fingers would be more if you're making a baby or a, a child. They tend to have shorter, fatter fingers than adults who have quite long, slender ones. So I'm putting my little marks in now just to make the nails. Super simple, but nice and effective. And, and it's more or less the same depending on whether you're doing really big ones or really small ones. You do it the same way. So again, we could make this one, you know, you could be doing a little peace sign, like that. And then stand it up like, like so. And look at that, that is quite a quick way of doing realistic hands. You can use it on your models, on your little figures, you can use it on big stuff, you can use it on animals, and quite a fun little technique to have in your back pocket, I would say. Peace out.